Well, I guess, uh, Luke, what sort of uh, threat to sort of, I guess, the, the Stormers, I guess, pose this week? And, you know, what have you sort of seen after them from week one? Um, yeah, Stormers are a very good team. You know, they always have been for as long as I've been, uh, you know, playing in Super Rugby. They've always been a, a very good defensive team and uh, they've always liked to spin the ball and have a go with it. So, and they are pretty unlucky to actually lose that game on, on the weekend against the Waratahs. Um, so, um, they're sort of like your typical uh, South, South African side. Uh, big forwards but yet very mobile so they like the confrontation and the you know physical side of the game and then they've got some uh, ele electric backs too so uh, they sort of pose a threat right across the park and one that we're going to have to be uh, on our toes to stop. You guys are pretty good last week and um, Razor's only made sort of I guess a couple of changes into the side so what's he sort of I guess addressed um, you know sort of throughout the week was he sort of pleased or you know is there quite a few work ons you guys wanted to sort of I guess look at? Oh yeah, look, there's always things to work on. Um, that scoreline was probably pretty flattering, to be fair. Um, up until you know, 15 or maybe 10 to go, that game could go on either way. So, um, you know, lots of things f for us to work on. Um, our penalty count was right up there again, and a lot of them were to do with being offside uh, at the breakdown. Um, and you, you just our little micro skill sets that we pride ourselves on uh, weren't quite up to our standards. So. Um, always a lot of things to uh, and improve, and that's one thing that Razor sort of brings to this group is he is he wants us to get better every day. So, I guess a team like like the Stormers came here um, to New Zealand last year. They didn't have a very good time <laughs> against the New Zealand sides. You think sometimes some of these, I guess, big South African teams, they, they sort of maybe a little bit underfoot, or why do you sort of think they sometimes struggle in New Zealand? Uh, I'm not sure really. Um, I certainly know from our point is that um, we don't take them lightly so so we prepare um, to the best of our ability and we uh, you know we go out there um, ready for a for a big battle you know we give them that respect that they deserve and um, so whether it's the way that we play or the way they play I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure. Do you get to lead the team out two weeks in a row 100th super game this time around? Would be good, but I don't think Sammy will let me. I think he likes trotting out first, so no, no, I'll, I'll just tuck him right on the back of the line and come out. You're a late bloomer in the game. I mean, you know, getting to a milestone, three three figures, how much of a big deal is that for you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah well, you could say I was definitely a late bloomer. Um, certainly when I was, uh, you know, when, when I came out of school and in my early 20s and that, um, you know, I had a dream I wanted to play for the Crusaders, but, you know, to be honest, it was probably a far-fetched dream. And, um, you know, just to get that first game for them, I was stoked and, you know, never really thought of playing 100. Uh, and now to have hit that mark last week and to play my 100 Super game this week, uh, it's not many uh, players around that get to achieve that. So, you know, pretty honoured and, and uh, privileged. And it probably won't be till... You know, your career's finished and you look back and you realise actually how big of an achievement it was. So. Bridging from that dream that didn't seem attainable to, to getting to this point, or, or initially getting into the, the, the squad, what, what were the key things, who were some of the key people that helped you get there? Um, I, think the, I think the first person in my uh, rugby career that really sort of nurtured me and, and actually could see the potential was Duncan Doig at High School Old Boys. Uh, he always believed in me and um, yeah, and, and he probably started the, uh, the drive, I guess, where um, you know, he, he said that I'm good enough to get there, you, you just have to believe in yourself and you know, go do it. And then I think um, Rob Penny was probably another big factor in that. You know, like he plucked me out of club rugby, never been in the academies or anything like that. And skinny little white boy that was on the building site, never seen a gym. Uh, you know, when I was 23, and uh, he took a gamble with me, and you know, called me into the squad, and you know, got me in the gym, and then you know, f from then, uh, just everything sort of you know blossomed and. And then, you know, the other coaches that I've been um, in, in involved with, obviously, you know, Toddy for obviously giving me a chance at Super Rugby, but, 
you know, there was Daryl Gibson that was a big uh, factor, uh, helping me when he was coach here. Uh, same with Aaron Major and, you know, Tabs and Dave Hewitt. And now the current coaches, you know, Jason, uh, Brad and Razor, they've all helped me get better in their own little way. And, um, you know, without them, you know, I probably wouldn't be standing here. No, about to play 100 super games. So aside from, from needing to spend a fair bit of time in the gym in those early days, in a rugby sense, what, what were the weaknesses that you, you really had to turn around? Oh, everything. <laughs> Actually, uh, the, the first time I came into the gym here, uh, Luke Thornley was the trainer and he's like, oh, we'll just strength test you. Um, I managed to bench press 40 kilos six times. That was my max. And uh, then he wanted me to do some chin-ups, and I was sort of hanging off the bar, and he was like, "Right, you can start doing a chin-up." I said, "I've, I've been trying for the last 10 seconds. Uh, I couldn't even pull myself up." So, um, yeah, definitely the strength, and I think just getting a bit bigger. I think well, for coming here, I was 98 kilos, and you know you can't play against men when you're that size. So, um, yeah, just that, just that whole getting, uh, you know, your body ready for the rigors of. Um, you know, playing professional footy. What are you bench pressing now? I probably still don't bench much more than 40 to be fair. <laughs> but, um, yeah. well, well, why did it seem so far-fetched at the time? Is it, were you in the first 15 at full time? No, no. I was third 15 at Boys High. Um, then come out and played under-19s and then a bit of Div 2. And then uh, yeah, senior footy. And I'd played... Oh, this going bad. I think I played four seasons of senior footy here in Christchurch, so um, I've played a lot of club footy. And uh, I guess when you get to that age, I was 23, you know, 24 years old, um, you sort of think that the dream's over because you're at that age and you think if you're going to make it that you've been picked up before then. But um, yeah, I'd, I just had that belief that I could get there. It didn't matter my age and that, and I just kept uh, kept banging on the door, so to speak. And then. Uh, like I said, that you know that that door got opened a little bit, and I stuck my foot in, held it open, and then um, just you know hard work and determination, and that I managed to kick the thing down. And you know, yeah. Probably a nice message for the other young kids out there. To keep yeah, going. <coughs> I think it is. Like I've seen it happen a lot, especially through club footy. Guys have that same dream, and they don't get there, and then they just stop playing footy when they're 23 or 24. And you know, I'm I'm not the only example. You know, you look at uh, guys like, um, you know, John O'Gibbs, he was a late bloomer. Uh, Dave Hewitt, Scott Hamilton, all came through the third 15 at Boys High. A um, little bit late, you know, developing, but, you know, those guys have very good careers here and with the All Blacks as well. So, um, yeah, certainly if you've got the, the drive and, um, you know, you want to get something, don't even give up on it because, uh, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen.